for sticking around. My name is Julien Lizet. I'm one of the co-founders at Argent. Uh, and today, actually, I will not be speaking about Argent. I will be speaking about Hopper, which is a, an open source privacy mixer that we've been developed uh, internally. Uh, actually, this, most of this work was done by Olivier van der Bigelaar from our team. This is going to be annoying. Actually, I'm going to plug my battery. So. So that should be better. So I was saying I will not be speaking about Argent, but about Hopper, uh, which is work was uh, mostly done by Olivier van den Bigelaar from our team, so the credit should go to him. And if you have a pretty deep technical question, you should also ask them to him uh, on Twitter. So I just said I will not be speaking about Argent, but I think there is some value in briefly describing what Argent is, because it gives some context on why we started working on the privacy mixer. So Argent is a smart contract-based wallet. Uh, with a lot of cool features. We have seamless recovery, you can block fraudulent transaction, you can freeze your account, there's no uh, abstraction of gas, or no transaction fees, and reusers in EMS and so on. So, so basically what we try to do is abstract most of the complexity of the blockchain and enable an experience similar to what you get on the best mobile banking application today, but in a fully non-custodial way. And the, the, the vision for that is that we want to enable actually people which are outside of crypto bubble to, to access the blockchain. And so if you, if you start to build a, a new financial system for people that actually are not really tech savvy, they have some kind of expectation of what that system, or the features that that system should provide. For example, people assume that if you transact, that doesn't give the person you're transacting with access to your entire history. For example, I mean in the future I'm just making a transaction to my insurer, I may not be okay for my insurer to know that I just visited an oncologist two weeks ago. This kind of information should not be disclosed and should be private. And of course on Ethereum, which is a public ledger with full transparency, you don't have these properties. There's also an economical argument for privacy, is the fact that you want your token to be fungible. If I send you one Ether, you want that Ether to be worth one Ether. Now, if you know where that ether comes from, actually, you may believe that it has less value because it can be tainted. For example, it comes from an exchange being hacked. That token may be worth less than actually one ether. So these properties are very important. So if you want to be inspirational, you can say that privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. If you're a bit more pragmatic, we actually allow the users saying that they were not, uh, they were feeling uncomfortable by linking a hardware wallet on which they had a lot of funds with their Argent wallet. And actually this, this, this second quote is really the use case we try to solve. So we, we really asked our question, can we actually address this very simple use case? A user wants to fund his Argent wallet, which has no fund, and send it from hardware wallet. And can we do that such that the two addresses are not linked? The process is fully non-custodial. It is mobile friendly, and actually this point has driven a lot of the choices that we've made uh, to design Hopper. And of course, it has to be economically viable in terms of gas. If you transfer one ether, but you pay 0.5 ether in gas to make that transaction happen, this is not practical. Fortunately, there are solutions to address that use case. And as you probably all know, ZK Snarks can be quite useful for that. Uh, we didn't start from scratch, so we should also give some credit to the team of Barry Whitehead and Wei Jie that was on the panel with me earlier. They've done a great work on Let's Not Miximus and now Semaphore. And so we try, well, basically we, we try to extend what they had done, build on top of what they had done, but really customize it and make it practical for our target use case. So all this upper or Miximus works is that basically if I want to send a coin to someone, I will mint a secret coin, which is a leaf in a Merkle tree. And the person that wants to withdraw that coin needs to prove that it knows the secret behind one of the coins and that this coin hasn't been spent yet. So the, the, the principle is, is quite simple. In practice, all this hopper work because we do have a, an iOS application that you guys should uh, try, uh, which is in alpha now, but I think it's, it's, 
it's a good way to, to see what it does. So basically the client using the, the Opera application will generate a div. So we just do a SHA-256 of a secret and the destination address. Using your hardware wallet, you make a deposit to the mixer contract and you attach as data your leaf. Of course, other people will do the same and each transfer is of identical value. As we will see, this is uh, critical. And that results basically in a sea of identical transfer. Of course, the more you wait, the more people will deposit ether on the mixer contract and the more your anonymity set increases. I put an asterisk because it is not as simple as that, but it provides the, the intuition of how we get anonymity. Finally, after a certain time, the person who wants to withdraw the coin, again using the Opera app, can tell the mixer to send the fund to the destination, and you do that by sending a, a proof. The mixer contract will verify the proof, and if the proof is correct, we'll send the fund to the destination address. For example, that might be that secret coin being transferred, and hooray, you receive your one ether on your hardware wallet. So the, the flow and the user experience is actually quite simple. No others in working practice, so I will not go deep into the, the ZK Snark framework for mixers, but basically you want to prove that you know a secret behind a leaf in a Merkle tree, where the leaf is the SHA-256 of a secret and a destination address, and you want to prove that that coin hasn't been spent yet. So actually you can translate that into mathematic, mathematical equation, and that will give you a circuit. So in our case, these are the, the set of equations that we want to solve. This is the secret inputs that we want to prove we know without revealing them. And of course, there is some public inputs. So using this, you can actually build your circuit and, and have your, your verifier and your, your prover uh, using libraries such as Gibsnat, for example. In terms of smart contract, the smart contract is, is quite simple. At first, in terms of the ABI, we have two main methods, a commit, where you deposit your funds and you attach your leaf as data, and then a withdraw function where you specify the public input that I just showed, the destination, uh, a nullifier, which proves that there is no double spend, and then your, the proof that you have uh, constructed using the zk Snack framework. So that's kind of the general framework. Now, as I mentioned, we are similar to other mixers, but it's all about the choices that you make for your implementation. So in the case of Hopper, we use MIMC for the hashing function of the Merkle tree. MIMC stands for Minimal uh, Multiplicative Complexity. The intuition for that is that in the zk snark framework, you, you have your equation, you translate that into a circuit with addition and multiplication gates, and actually the number of constraints that you will have depends on the multiplication gate that you have. So if you use hashing function with minimal multiplicative complexities, that means less constraint. That means generating the proof uh, will be easier off-chain, and that means that it is more mobile friendly. So we've made that choice so that you could actually generate the proof on the mobile within five or six seconds. Of course, there's a few drawbacks of using MIMCs. As always in engineering, it's a question of compromises. If you use MIMCs, they are more expensive for the EVM because there's no pre-compile to, uh, to do MIMCs. As we will see, there is an EIP for that. But as of for now, doing MIMCs on chain is quite expensive. So actually, when you deposit a leaf, you need to update your Merkle tree, and that requires a lot of gas. And also, MIMCs have been less studied. And if you were at IAS presentation this morning, they highlighted that the Ethereum Foundation is funding research on MIMCs for uh, specific, specifically that reason. So to mitigate the risk uh, associated with MIMCs, we are actually using SHA-256 uh, for the leaf of the tree. I will not go into the, the cryptography behind it, but the intuition is that even if MIMC turns out to be non pre image resistant, you will still have privacy, assuming that MIMC of one half of the, the input is pre image resistant. The problem is that using SHA-256 means more secret constraints, and so again, we increase uh, the generation of the proof. So as I illustrated in our, in our use case, we want people being able to transfer uh, one deed from a hardware wallet to an argent wallet that has not been funded yet. So there comes the question is how does the person withdrawing the money will pay? There is no eat, he cannot pay for the gas. And so the idea is to use relayers. 
Um, and so in our case, we have deployed our own relayer. There's uh, work being done by the Semaphore team on the gas network station to actually use uh, a network of, of relayers. And the idea is that the relayer will basically make that withdrawal transaction on your behalf and will, will be repaid the gas that it used by taking a small cut on the deposit. As we discussed on the panel, there is some limit, I mean, there's some risk as using relayers because of course you're using a centralized, you may not be centralized, but using a system with an API, so you're making an API calls, that means that people can use your IP address to kind of reduce your anonymity. So there's a lot of, of, of consideration to, to take into that, and one possible solution is to have a relayer market with built-in talk uh, routing in. Another important question with Mixer is when to withdraw your funds. Because of course, if you deposit your funds and you withdraw them immediately, then it completely breaks the anonymity. If you deposit your funds but you always withdraw them after 24 hours, it's the same. People naturally tend to, to, to have patterns, and so this is something that needs to be mitigated by actually the UX of building a mixer, or do you incentivize users to actually behave correctly or in a smart way? Uh, the problem is that, yeah, whatever anonymity uh, you use, for example, in Hopper, we just illustrate the number of other leads that have been deposited since you deposited, so that can be rep representing an anonymity set. But again, this is not a perfect metric, because say there, my anonymity set is 17, maybe the 16 of other deposits, they come from the same person, which is actually trying to target me. So it's really tricky to, to find proper privacy metrics. And so in the next uh, version of Hopper, the idea is to basically only enable you to redraw your funds after a certain point. So that all users depositing, depositing within one day will be incentivized to withdraw more or less at the same time. And so again, you, you kind of uh, increase the anonymity. So I mentioned that we only enable transfer of one ETH. Again, this makes sense. If we let people deposit 0.77 ether, for example, and then someone withdraws 0.77, there's a good probability that these two people are actually connected and again you've recreated that link that we're trying to break. So the idea is to fix the amount that people can deposit so they become indistinguishable. Now the, uh, one improvement that we can do, because of course if there's only a deposit of one ETH it's quite kind of limited. So the idea is that we could make a contract for one ETH, a contract for 10 ETH, and a contract for 100 ETH. But the problem is that you split your anonymity set and again this is not a good idea. There are uh, a solution, and this is something uh, that we will work on in the future, or that we want people to work on, is the possibility to use joint speed circuit. So basically the idea is that you always deposit a multiple of one E, and then when you want to withdraw, you can actually combine two leaves into one, and so you can, uh, for example, withdraw one, 10, or 100, uh, without breaking the anonymity. Another limitation of Hopper is that there's only uh, around 32,000 uh, leaf per contract and the reason is that you have a Merkle tree and the more depth you add to your Merkle tree, the more expensive it is in terms of gas. And since you wanted to keep uh, this under a million for the deposit and the withdrawals, it's kind of limit the number of, of level that you can have in your Merkle tree and so the, number, uh, the level of, of leaf that you can deposit. So we have fixed that at 15, which gives the gas around uh, a million. The problem is that once you fill up your three, you need to deploy a new contract. So uh, I've talked about some of the limitations of Hopper. Fortunately, there's a lot of areas for improvement. One is around optimization. So you could patch the public input into one, which would reduce the number of constraints. Uh, you can optimize the contract. For the moment, the contract is in plain solidity. There's some step that could be written in assembly that would reduce uh, the consumption by 15 to 20 percent. And again, that enables you to increase the depth of your of your tree, and so the the possible deposit that can be on a single contract. And there is work on a new EIP 1108 ready which is a pre-compiled for MIMC. So that would greatly reduce the gas of computing MCs. That means updating the Merkle tree would be much cheaper. So again, we can use a much big bigger uh, Merkle tree. Another uh, functional improvement that uh, is part of the next iteration for Hopper is to store a buffer of the recent Merkle rules. 
because now when you want to uh, when you want to create your your proof, you need to have uh, a Merkle path to the leaf that you want. The problem is that by the time you compute your proof, that may take five, six seconds, and then you submit your transaction to the blockchain. Again, it may take 15, 30, or one minute to be mined. It is possible that someone deposits a new leaf in between, which will update your three, and then suddenly your Merkle path is no longer valid. So by keeping uh, a history of three, four, five Merkle routes, actually you can uh, improve the number of, of uh, withdrawal that will succeed. As I mentioned, we uh, can allow custom withdrawal using joint split, and then we can work on a relayer market. So that's it. Uh, that was kind of brief, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want, if you're interested by Hopper, you can check us on GitHub. The project is fully open source, and the idea for us is to build a tool for the community. So this is not to be an urgent project. So feel free to contribute. Uh, if you have questions, you can ping us on, on Twitter or Telegram. And if you're interested by Arjun, you can download uh, a wallet right now and skip the waiting list using the link that is there. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you guys have any questions. How much gas does it cost? So we limit it to a million. So a million to deposit and around a million to grow. <laughs> Yes, expertly in joint speed, but the, the idea is really to so you make a proof that will combine two Merkle leaves into one. So say I have a, I have a Merkle leaf, a secret coin, which has one eater, another one that has one eater, I do a joint split and suddenly I have one leaf which contains two eater and one that contains none. And so if I withdraw the one with two eaters, suddenly I, I can actually withdraw so different deposits, a different amount than what people deposit. So that would be a different circuit. Yes, it needs, yeah, it needs to be a different circuit. But again, you can combine the joint split with the withdrawal, so that actually it gives flexibility. You could kind of see like that, but really the idea is to enable custom amounts. Yeah. Because we still need to know the secret behind these comps, so it's not like you can transfer with someone else unless you transfer them the secret. But the idea is more to be able to join the amounts. Thank you.